All right, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Okay, going live. All right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Wow, this is um, early for me, right? <laughs> this is early to be up talking and um, networking, but uh, but I love it. I love it. So yes. So guys, this is Kathy Hood. I am VP of uh, Marketing and Communications with the South Fulton Chamber. And welcome to Fast Break. And that's what it really is, guys. We just want to just give you some great nuggets this morning. On, on a fast break and just get your day started. Well, actually something that you can use for the rest of the week and uh, and you utilize, you know, for, for the rest of um, your business life, right? <laughs> so I just want to just say thank you so much for getting up this morning. I hope you grabbed your cup of coffee. That's the one thing that I'm missing. So when our guests come on, I think I'm gonna step away and go get my little cup of joe and uh and join you guys with your uh with your fast break so i hope you grabbed you uh, uh um um a biscuit or a sausage and biscuit or something so but anyway this is super exciting so today uh, know who our guest speaker is um actually you all have been seeing the the beautiful flyer that has gone out with her beautiful picture so the one and only michelle taylor willis is with us this morning and um i'm just going to let her get right into what she's going to be doing i'm going to let her tell you you already know all about her um and i'm just going to let her get started and uh tell her tell us what she wants us to know to motivate us this morning to get moving and shaking all right all right so if michelle taylor willis would join me on the stage hi, hi michelle how are you i am awesome how are you this morning i am ready to go you insist on doing these things at 7 30 in the morning huh <laughs> look now you don't forget whose idea of the time now fast break oh, was, was my that, idea was that my idea the, the, the time was your idea i'm like girl Look, let me tell you something. I I just told him I am not a morning person like that. Oh my god. But I would do it for you. Hello? I was like, it sounded like such a great idea. And it's like, you know, we get them going right in the in the beginning of the morning, get them before the day gets to them. Yikes. Yes. So, you know, I'm like, look, but you hit that snooze button, you're like, oh, uh, okay. Oh, oh, did I, I was sleep? Oh, dude. I know. Five more minutes, girl. Look, I go. Through, I went through all of that. Okay, every every Tuesday <laughs> that we have fast break. Oh, <laughs> this bit of working from home is like something else, exactly. right? So, exactly. But anyway, guys, I'm going. I'm going to leave the stage and Michelle, take it away. Awesome. I've got about fifteen to twenty minutes, right, Kathy? Yep. Take. Yep. All right. There we're going to go. roll through this, guys. So, good morning. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Michelle Taylor Willis, and um, I own Ganyo Media. Um, Ganyo Media is a, a, a media company here in Atlanta, and we basically sell ads. We provide uh, affordable options for advertising for small businesses. And by small businesses, I mean not really the, the, the small business administration's uh, description of a small business, 300 employees or, or less. Our small business is kind of like that 350,000, you know, between five and seven million in gross revs every year. So really a small business set, entrepreneur, solopreneur up to maybe, you know, 10, 12 employees, something like that. Um, so that's what we do. Um, but really when people ask me, what do I do? I tell them I sell ads and that's what I do. Um, I have always sold. And this morning I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about you selling because at the end of the day, whether you have, um, whether you're a, an entrepreneur, um, whether you're the CEO, um, or whether you're a salesperson or a cashier or whatever you do, everybody is in sales. And so I, I'm gonna give you a very abbreviated, a very abbreviated um, version of the sales talk that I do. So I actually do sales trainings um, and I do sales trainings that last week and I do sales trainings that last 15 to 20 minutes like today. But the key takeaway here is that everybody is in sales. It doesn't matter what your job description or what your job title is. If you are in the workforce or if you're alive, 
you're in sales because you're always going to need somebody to do something for you. You're going to need to influence somebody to do something for you, with you, all of those things. So everybody's in sales. If I were with you right now live, I would make you repeat that back to me. But everybody's in sales. All right. So I'm going to run you through what a sales process looks like. But the first thing I want to give you, and this is your, I guess it's not Monday motivation, your Tuesday motivation, is confidence. If you're not confident about who you are, what you do, the product you deliver, the service that you provide, you can't sell. You can't sell it. Okay. So you have to be confident that you are the best at what you do. And every sales talk that I start, I always start it with confidence. The C word. You have to know that you're the best at what you do. And nobody does what you do better than you. So I'm going to pretend we're all together now. And I want you guys to say it with me. I'm the best at what I do. Nobody does what I do better than me. Okay? So say that. You repeat it back. I'm going to give you a couple. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm hoping that you guys all played along and you actually did it. That's how you become confident. That's how you become the best at what you do. You say that over and over again. I'm the best at what I do. Nobody does what I do better than me. Nobody. I believe my 50% is better than most people's 100%. So whatever it is you have to do to amp yourself up, you first have to confidently know that you're the best at what you do. All right. Once you know that, you'll be able to go out and deliver a winning, you know, a speech or pitch or whatever it is you need to do to get people corralled around you. I mean, think about it. If you, if you run a chamber, you're in sales, right? Because you have to get people to, you know, buy into your chamber. Um, if you run an organization, you're in sales. If you're in operations, you're in sales. If you're managing people, you're in sales. So you really need to think about that and think about how you move throughout the day and how you influence people to get behind your vision, to get behind your company, to get behind your cause, just to, or to walk alongside you. But you got to know that you're the best at what you do and nobody does what you do better than you. All right. So let's talk really quickly about what a sales process looks like. There's five steps to the sales process. One, two, three, four, five, five. All right. The first is rapport, building rapport. That's introduction. The second is the interview process. The third is the building value stage. The fourth is negotiating. And the fifth is the close. All right. So here's how this breaks down. In that building rapport phase, the introduction, when you first meet someone, and you guys think about this, this isn't just something that you can do in business. This is something that you can do in your entire life. This has become a lifestyle for me. And for those of you who know me and engage me, uh, engage with me, you would probably tend to agree with this. But if you think about it, when you first meet someone, you don't just dive in like, hey, you want to join me? Or hey, you want to join my team? Or hey, you want to come with me? You know, you spend time getting to know somebody, even if it's 30 seconds, 45 seconds. You have to do that because that's when people immediately build trust. And studies would show that within just the first few minutes of you meeting someone, you know whether or not you're going to lean towards doing business with that person or whether you're not. So we that introduction period is key to us building a relationship with somebody because they're going to decide very quickly whether they want to hang out with you or whether they don't. All right. The next phase is key. That's the interview phase. And you think about it just in your regular life. When you're interviewing somebody, what are you doing? You're asking questions. I know you guys answered that, right? You're asking questions. When you interview someone, you're asking questions. Why do we ask questions? We ask questions to understand. We ask questions for clarity. We ask questions so that we can build a case and give people what they need and what they want based on the answers to the questions, right? 
if we don't know what they want, if we don't know what they need, how could we possibly give them what they want or what they need? And the only way to find that out is to ask questions. And one of the key questions that most people, whether you're in sales as a job or sales as a as just as a lifestyle, there's one W word that people don't ask often, and that's why. So whenever you ask questions and someone tells you something, if you don't know what they're doing uh, or why they're doing it, just ask, why? Why do you do that? You know, why did you decide to do this? Because you're going to need that information to be able to come back in on the back end and give them what they need and what they want, which hopefully will be your product and service. It may not be. That's the other thing too, right? You ask questions in this interview phase because maybe it's not a fit. But remember, if you're confident and if you're the best at what you do and nobody does what you do better than you, then you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you, right? You get to decide whether they're doing business with you or not, not them deciding whether or not they want to do business with you. All right. The next stage is the build value stage. So this is where we tell people um, what we can do for them based on the information that they gave us in that interview phase, right? So based on what you've told me, let me tell you a couple of things about my company. Let me tell you a couple of things about me. Let me tell you a couple of things about my organization that will help you make a decision. Okay. Again, when you think about this, this is a lifestyle. If you incorporate this talk track into your life, you will really never have a problem engaging with people or getting people to corral around you, right? Because you spent, you spent time building a cause based on their needs and their wants. And by default, you'll be able to satisfy your needs and your wants too. So in this build value phase, you're literally showing them how you can get them what they need or want, but it's all based on the questions that they provided you. All right, next phase is negotiate. This is a key phase because a lot of people do, most people do negotiating wrong. If you negotiate well, both people win and both, people or both sides end up giving something up. So nobody feels slighted or maybe each person <laughs> feels slighted, if you know what I mean, right? So, and you never, in negotiations, you never ever give something up without getting something in return. So if you say, um, yes, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to give you this cup of coffee for five cents because you asked for it for five cents. If I give you the cup of coffee for five cents, will you come back for the next three days and get a cup of coffee when you really wanted to sell the coffee for 10 cents, right? Sure, I'll give you this, but in return, will you give me that, this? So each person feels like they gave a little bit up and nobody feels slighted or each person feels slighted just a little bit. That's negotiation, right? It's a win-win or a lose-lose, but nobody should feel, walk away getting more than the other person. And again, the negotiation is based on the interview. And if you think about the five steps of this process, most of the, most of the time is spent on asking questions because it's co so key to the rest of it. All right, once you've negotiated and you look like you're heading for a deal, then it's the close and you ask for the business. Listen, looks like we got a deal on the table. Will you do business with me? Just ask people, right? If you're confident about what you do, you know you've got the best product, you know you've got the best service, you know you've got the best chamber, you know you've got the best marketing organization. It doesn't matter if they say yes or no, because you know that you're the best, so you'll be either able to convince them or you'll decide it's not worth it and you'll find somebody else that will. But you have to ask for the business. 80% of deals are left on the table because people don't ask for them. And if you don't ask for what you want, chances are you will likely not get it. And you can't ask for it if you're not confident about it. If you don't know you're the best, if you don't know you deserve it, if you don't know it was yours to start with, then you aren't confident enough and you're not going to ask for it. 
All right. So quick recap. The biggest thing, confidence. You have to know you're the best at what you do. Nobody does what you do better than you. Ask the right questions. Build a case based on what you've been told. Give a little to get a little and ask for the business. And if you do this as a lifestyle, not as a job, not as a career, and remember, everybody's in sales all the time, then you cannot lose. And that's it for me, Kathy. How'd I do on time? Kathy? Hello? Kathy? All right, I think I'm done, Kathy. Lisa? Okay, I'm not sure exactly. And Dr. Lisa had to let me back in. <laughs> I heard you. I'm like, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> you no, know, that's awesome. So what I wanted to do, um, I'm just going to go over to um, uh, the chat and just see if anybody has any, uh, if anybody have any, have any questions. So okay. uh, yeah, no. Great job. Thank you. Did I do okay on time? I was look, watching the clock. So yeah, no, you're great. So, and just to keep us on, you know, on time and on track. So guys, that's exactly what it is. It's a fast break. So, you know, it was just some nuggets. You gave five great points. Um, I love that about rapport because, you know, um, you know that I am um, uh, a certified gift coach. So I'm into people, period. You know, I love people. And so report, building a rapport is definitely very important. And some people have the gift of doing it and some people don't. I mean, I, when I say, well, no, I'm, I'm, I said it, I'm not going to take it back. <laughs> you know, not to say that they don't have relationships, but, right. you know, some of us, like, I believe that um, that you do have the gift of um, exhorter. And so that because you're always you know, um, building up other people, right? And so you do a great job at, at you know, building relationships with people. I mean, you're all over the the, the, the planet right now, so we know. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes, you know, having that gift to be able to do this. So my thing is, so I just wanted to just ask you on that really quick, you know, so do you think that somebody have to be really gifted to be able to build rapport with, with people? Wait, Kathy, you're, sales. you're, um, my audio, I can, I can hear you now, but it's kind of, it just went kind of crackly. Oh, okay. I can, you said, oh, okay. Right. Yes. Yes. Can you ask your question again? Or if you want to put it in the chat so I can make sure. No, I can ask it again. So is it better now? Not really. Hmm. So let me ask everybody as uh, like the people, um, our guest, can you guys hear me okay? Rex, Carmelita? I, I can hear you a little bit better now. I, I know you just said, can you guys hear me okay? Right. Dr. Lisa, am I good? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Okay. Go ahead. Ask your question again. I think it's a little bit better. Okay. So... Um, what I was asking, so I'm, I'm going to get a little closer to the computer. <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying that, you know, it takes um, a special gifting to be able to build rapport with people. I said, so do you think that you really have to be gifted uh, to do this? You know, because I said that you build relationships, you build tons and tons of relationships. You know, and it really is. Most people don't want to be, you know, they want to get straight to the point. They don't want to be uh, friendly and, you know, and all that. So your your take on that as, as far as build a report, do you think you have to be gifted to do it? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And no one has ever asked me that, Kathy. Um, and I get interviewed all the time, as you know. I've never been asked that question. Um, do I think you have to be gifted? I don't. I do think there is a gifting to it. 
that can make you maybe better than most? I mean, clearly some people are better communicators than others, clearly. Like you are gifted in that, right? You're a great communicator. You have great insight. You listen well. You ask great questions. Everybody doesn't have that gift. Um, so that could make you better at it maybe than most. Okay. But it doesn't mean that someone can't be good at it, right? Um, excuse me. And that's why it's so important for everybody to realize that they're in sales, right? Because, gotcha. because you have to, if you're not gifted in it, then in order for you to survive and to have relationships, you have to learn how to at least adopt some of these, you know, a way to deliver these steps. Because if you can do that and adopt it as a lifestyle, it mm -hmm. will actually make you better in life for yourself, for your, for whether or not you want to be, you don't, it doesn't mean you have to be a networking king or networking queen or, or sales guru, or any of that, but you need to be able to communicate and going through these steps of the sales process allows it, it makes it very easy for those who aren't gifted in it, like you, to be able to move through life accordingly. Um, and so that's why this, this is built for people that maybe aren't gifted, right? Um, right? Because if you need to get through life, you can use this process to get through life. Because remember, it's a lifestyle. It's not, it's not just for business. And you know me, Kathy. You know, as I'm going through the the parts of the sales process, you probably can say, in my as I engage with Michelle, I can see how she uses this, right? Mm -hmm. So, does that answer your question? Yes. So, in other words, like it's like you know, the people who are not really gifted, gifted to do it, they can be taught. <laughs> yes, they can be taught. Taught yeah. or trained. You can be taught. Yeah. I mean, you might not yeah. be the best at it, but you just need to be able to get through it so that you can adopt it as a lifestyle. Now, yeah. having said that, Kathy, I'll also say that if you are a salesperson, there are some salespeople who are absolutely gifted at it, and everybody isn't meant to be in a sales career. Right. And I do believe that salespeople are born, not necessarily bred. Right? Wow. Yeah. So, and that's the thing. So, you meet a lot of people, and the first thing, you know, uh, just certain, you know, um, organizations, they'll say, oh, well, I'm not a salesperson, right? I don't like this. And we do it, we do a certain amount of it anyway, you know, because we have to sell ourselves when we That's are exactly right. on an interview or, or whatever. But um, so, yeah, so that's why I love, you know, what I teach as far as and helping people to understand. So, you know, if that's a weakness of yours, then, you know, get in your lane right. and hire your weaknesses. You that's know, you exactly work in right. your strengths and hire your weakness or collaborate or partner with. So that's yeah, exactly so that's right. That's exactly right. That You hit the nail on the head. Um, so you are gifted in this, right? Um, but no, I mean, you might not have a job as a salesperson. You might not be a sales manager. You might not be a sales executive, but you are in sales. And when people say that, especially business owners or leaders of companies, when they say, oh, I'm not in sales, I'm like, should never say that. And I don't use absolutes a lot, but never, you should never say that because everybody's in sales. And if your mindset is if that you're not in sales, especially as a leader of an organization, and if it's yours, you're the number one salesperson. You're absolutely. The number one salesperson. So just because you don't have sales in your job description does not mean that you are in sales because everybody's in sales. And that's why this process is so good because it helps people understand that if you just follow the process, Mm -hmm. it, you can just move through life and get and be influential and get what you need and get what you want. Wow. That's awesome. So guys, look, hopefully um, that was that, that too fast for you and that you all enjoyed uh, Michelle. Thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us this no, morning. Thank you for having for me. Fast break. We certainly appreciate it. So guys join us next month, June eighth. No, the second Tuesday, or is the first Tuesday? Let me see. Let me get the date for you. 
I don't know what. And uh, mm-hmm. so that way, uh, because we're going to have a, a fabulous guest on that day. And I, you'll see the flyer come out real soon. But I just want to make sure I have the correct date. So June, is it the June 15th? June 15th, 7.30 a.m. You guys be here with us. And it's going to be amazing, amazing. Girl, I'm thinking about I might do one on the gifts, you know, to get people to understand how those things, how we are really gifted, you know, can help them in business. I mean, it's very, very important. So because you can learn how to place people in your in the right positions and, and just different things like that, according to their gifts, everybody would be happy, especially the owner. so guys thank you all so very much let's see anybody i'm just trying to check the chat to see if anybody else had questions um i don't see anybody kind of quiet group this morning yes so but anyway uh ladies and gentlemen I appreciate you guys being here and we will definitely see you. Go ahead on the register. As soon as you see that flyer come out for our next fast break, you won't be disappointed. Never, ever, ever with our fast breaks. And we will see you soon. Right, Have a bye. fabulous day. Have Thank a great, you, great day. Thank you. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Lisa. She's working. She's working the backgrounds, everybody. So we love Dr. Lisa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Lisa. Mm-hmm.